Yeah, there you go. Look, 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 you'll come past and do a swim bike. Yeah. And you'll look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
So this is the rainforest area. Today guys, you'll be find animals from all over the world because animals, because rainforest animals do cover our entire planet. From the Amazon rainforest in South America, making your way eastwards, you do have rainforest ground in Congo and the gigantic Congo River Delta. Again, making your way eastwards across the Arabian Sea towards India and southern Sri Lanka, you do also have some more additional rainforests. Again, making your way eastwards, you also finally do have rainforest stretching from the Philippines all the way down to northern Australia. Now, one of the first animals you would come across today is our Mexican blind cavefish. They are a little personal favourite of mine because as you take a look at these Mexican blind cavefish in their hexagonal display, you're going to see they just look like ordinary little fish. They're only a few centimetres long for silver waves. Now, this is very, very strange. Why don't they have eyes? And how are they going around not bumping into anything? Well, the reason they do not have eyes is because these Mexican blind cane fish simply don't need eyes. Well, in the caves that they live in in Mexico, those caves are completely pitch black, so there is no need for eyes whatsoever. Eyes would be completely useless, so even though they are born with eyes, over the first few days of their lives, those eyes are reabsorbed back into their bodies. Now, as you may but this actually makes them rather unique. There are approximately 50 different species of piranha out in the wild, however, only five of them are known to actually be carnivores, and the rest of them are either herbivores or insectivores. Now, I did mention that these guys can go to a feeding frenzy, but number one, a feeding frenzy is an incredibly rare occurrence. It only ever happens when piranhas like these guys haven't had enough food for a very long time. And number two, when a feeding frenzy does happen, the piranhas are actually working together. Some, for some piranhas, their job is simply to hold down the food in order to make sure that it doesn't escape. And with other piranhas, their job is to actually make sure they just get a little bit of food. Their alternate jobs make sure that some piranhas hold down the food while other piranhas do get the food. And actually by working together, they can all ensure that as a species, they are going to be able to, be able to pass their genes on to the next generation. And then finally making your way down from the bridge towards our ranger hut. If you have a look in the middle of the ranger hut, you are going to see Rosie, who is our chili rose tarantula. Now Rosie, the chili rose tarantula, is rather old. She is about 15 years old, so she is an old age pensioner when it does come to tarantulas. But even in her older days, she does like to make things very relaxed, but it's the very nature of a tarantula. They're not about wasting energy, they do like to just stay in one place, almost their entire day until their next year passed. Now Rosie being that she is a chili rose tarantula does have a bite to her. However, this bite isn't really the end of the world. For those who have for those people that have been bitten by a chili rose tarantula, they compare it to a bee sting. Now I don't have any first-hand experience with a tarantula bite and I'm not looking for any first-hand experience. So we will just say apparently it does feel like a bee sting. But if you do ever find a tarantula out in the wild, you should be more concerned if they start waving their arms and shaking their bottom. This is a sign that they are actually quite angry. And if you see all of the hairs covering Rosie's body, those hairs can actually be extremely irritating. What two chili rose tarantulas, as well as many other tarantulas can do, is that when they are rather irritated, they can shake their arms, shake their bottom, all those hairs go flying up into the air. If they land on your skin, you will start itching. If they get in your eyes, you're going to start crying. And if you breathe those hairs in, you are going to start coughing and spluttering. 
And then finally, as you make your way past the ranger huts, you're going to see some of my favourite sharks here at the Sea Life Centre, our epaulette sharks. They are in the display with our silver monos and our archer fish. Now, these epaulette sharks, they're getting to be about a foot and a half to two feet long now. They are this brown, sandy colour with all these little black spots on their body, with these giant black spots, one on either side of their body. Now, the name epaulette shark comes from the fact that all of these little spots on their body look a little bit like eyes, and it is really, really good at deterring predators. One of the things that if you are a predator you should be very aware of is if the animal you're trying to predate on can see you. But because these epaulette sharks have these um, eye-like spots covering their whole body, that is more than enough to put off many, many different places because they just believe that that epaulette shark Oh, my God. 